Hey, Kid News fans. As you know, we're always trying to increase the news IQ of our listeners. Now there's a way to help them improve in all sorts of subjects. IXL is an online learning platform helping millions of K-12 kids up their academic game. 75 scientific studies back up the boost they'll get in math, science, reading, and social studies. Kids get instant feedback and explanations. Parents get reports showing what's working and where more help might be needed. And right now, Kid News listeners can try it out for 20% off when they sign up at IXL.com slash Kid News. Check out the monthly and annual memberships at IXL.com slash Kid News. Good morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Kim. Today is Friday, September 13th, 2024. Friday the 13th. And we begin with Polaris Dawn's history-making spacewalk firmly in the rearview mirror. Early yesterday, civilian astronauts Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis, one at a time, climbed out of their Dragon spacecraft into the abyss. Most spacewalks last hours, these two just 10 minutes each. Neither crew member ventured far, and each was tethered and kept a hand or foot attached to the capsule the whole time. Still, it was the centerpiece of the flight and a milestone for citizen adventurers. The four-person Polaris team will now focus on completing a list of experiments before their expected arrival back on Earth, potentially Sunday morning. Reflecting on the moment as he stood in the vacuum of space, Commander Isaacman said, Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, it looks like a perfect world. Friday the 13th may get under some people's skin, but for a handful of high school athletes like Paige Heverly, it's no sweat. Paige, a volleyball player from Guyton, Georgia, says she wears number 13 because she thinks it brings her luck. And no triskaidekaphobia or fear of the number 13 for sophomore softball player Alyssa Martin either. She told her local newspaper that sporting the unlucky number, just like her dad did on his high school jersey, didn't stop her from earning first team all-region honors as a freshman last year. However, she does admit to one superstition. She avoids stepping on a base at the end of each inning at all costs. Campbell's Soup is stirring things up. According to The Guardian, the company plans to drop the word soup from its label after 102 years. Chief Executive Mark Klaus says the move to rename the group Campbell's Company is part of a shift to focus on other snack foods and sauces. Campbell's will still sell soup, and the famous red and white cans will look pretty much the same. They will just say Campbell's with no soup. It's all's well that ends well. A rare Bronze Age jar that was accidentally smashed by a curious four-year-old at an Israeli museum is back on display at the Hecht Museum in Haifa after a painstaking restoration. Using 3D technology, special glue, and high-resolution video, restoration experts meticulously pieced the 3,500-year-old shattered jar back together. While small hairline cracks remain and a few fragments are missing, it's mostly intact. That's good enough for museum administrators who are determined to keep their treasures accessible to the public. However, visitors might notice something new in the exhibit, a sign that says, please don't touch. Athletic talent comes in all shapes, sizes, and it turns out, species. Foot volley, a mix of soccer and beach volleyball played without using your arms and hands, has a new international superstar, and he's not even human. Floki, a three-year-old border collie from Brazil, is wowing crowds on the beaches of Rio de Janeiro. Playing alongside his owner, Gustavo Rodriguez, the sporty pup uses his head and mouth to spike the ball over the net. According to the AP, Floki barks at Rodriguez to pass him the ball and celebrates a point with a high five or by jumping into his owner's arms. Rodriguez first noticed Floki's incredible energy and athleticism at two months old while volleying back and forth using a balloon. Still to come, a new survey reveals the oddest hotel lost and found items. But first, the Shape Night parents at Shape American School in Mons, Belgium, want to shout out Mrs. Evangelista's explorers and their class constitution. Always be kind, be safe, make good choices, check your mindset, and remember your three R's. Be respectful, be responsible, and always be ready to learn. Good advice for everyone. Thank you, Knights. Now today's Kid News Quiz. 
How many of SpaceX's civilian astronauts completed a spacewalk? Two. What is triskaidekaphobia? Fear of the number thirteen. A three-year-old border collie is winning at what sport? Foot volley. What famous company is dropping soup from its name? Campbell's. And in our kid news kicker, it's not uncommon to leave behind a phone charger or a toothbrush in the rush to check out of a hotel room, but your pet lizard? According to a new survey by a popular travel site, that's just one of the bizarre items workers have discovered. Other unusual items turning up in the lost and found include a six million dollar watch, two full leg casts, a wedding dress, and a car tire. Many hotels will do what they can to reunite travelers with their lost items, including some workers who go out of their way. The report highlights one hotel hero who drove 100 miles to return a passport, and another who replaced a lost teddy bear and included a story detailing the bear's sightseeing adventures. Thanks again to the Shape Night parents in Mons, Belgium, for sponsoring today's quiz, and a big shout out to Mrs. Evangelista and all her students at the Shape American School, which stands for Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe. Before we go, shout outs to our other Kid News classrooms: Mrs. Cutshall and her Tigers at Tyler Run School in Powell, Ohio; Mrs. Porter and her Pineapples and Almondale All Stars at Almondale School in Bakersfield, California; and Mrs. Sinawicki and her Bulldogs at Bell School in Papillion, Nebraska. Thanks for listening, and tune in tomorrow when we ring up another special edition of Kid News. This time, Tori will talk with a Wall Street Journal reporter about the pros and cons of banning cell phones in schools. And Monday, we're back with another fresh roundup of the news. Until then, have a great weekend. <laughs>